Hello and welcome. I'm Liz. Um, and this is formerly several things, but current incarnations for the want of pockets. Which of course has my lovely sidekick who's going to make noises through the entire thing probably. Yes, I know, buddy. Um, so I started doing more knitting and more sewing. So more to that later, because I figure I'll get into the good stuff first, which is what you generally come to see. And we'll go from there. So yeah. Um, first things first, the FO, the finished object. This is the peony shawl. And I forgot to open up my tablet. There we go. So this is the peony shawl. It is based off of a kneebling pattern, um, but it was redesigned by um, Harley Sang Sather, I think. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, and I absolutely adore this. It's got beading. It's got all kinds of like fancy work. In it's basically, it's, it's me in a lace shawl, I mean, really. Um, and there's photos on my Instagram, I think, of working on this. And then the, <laughs> the problem was that I read the pattern wrong, as one tends to do, or at least as I tend to do. And I added a whole extra piece in this center thing here and I didn't realize until I was starting like down here that I'd done that and that it was terribly terribly wrong um so that involved some crying but it got done um so yeah that was kind of that was my big project at the beginning of the year I got the pattern in late December and I had it finished um, before I went to California in February, at the beginning of February. So I had it done in a month, basically. So that's kind of my special thing for this year. Um, for those of you who've known me for any length of time, Insanity is still on the needles. Um, it has gotten bigger. So this is the Queen Susan shawl and I'm not going to bring it out right now just because it's tucked away and I don't feel like bringing it out. Um, so you'll, you'll hear reference to it more than once. So that's the finished object of the day. Um, I mean, other than socks, it's really all the knitting. I had to have done something else this year. I don't know what else I've done this year. That's horrible. I'll have to look back and find out because I have a sinking suspicion that other than socks, I haven't finished anything. Um, this is um, this is Cascade 220, um, just your bog standard. It's Cascade 220. What more is there to say? Uh, that's not the picture I want. That's the picture I want. Um, so this is, um, and unfortunately I'm using an odd camera because mine's broken. So I have no idea how well this is going to work, but this is Violet's jacket. Um, if it doesn't work, I'll insert a picture somewhere. Um, it's out of centenary, centenary stitches. Oh, I will link all the stuff in the, down below. Uh, and it's by Elizabeth, Elizabeth Lovick. Um, and it's actually based off of an early 20th century pattern. Um, and I had seen it in a YouTube clip um, for a show on World War One, and fell in love with it and decided I had to have it. So. This is the beginning of it. That's the bottom of it. Um, it's the first sweater that I really started this year because there were issues. And yeah. 
Um, what else have we got? Well, one more thing for the knitting. Because this is the other... That's the... That's the red side. Not that you can really tell right now. But this is um, made out of... I've forgotten what the yarn is. But it's this lovely, lovely blend of um, silk merino, I think, was what it was. Um, and this, I should bring it up here because you can probably see it better. That's the pattern. It's out of, I'll just mark my place again, Victorian Lace Today, um, which, I mean, it's an XRX book. Their knitting books tend to be pretty good. And this is no exception. It's one that Janet actually gave me, so Crazy Dog Yarns, um, because I'm knitting. This is her wedding shawl, or it will be once it's much larger and done. Um, so there'll probably be a review of the book later, but not right now. Um, but yeah, this is my, uh, because this is me, this is my mindless TV knitting at the moment. Um, any of you who saw me at, uh, on Sunday at Twist in saint andre d'Ablé, uh, probably saw me working on this. Because she got me the urn and I started it then. Um, this is one of her little bags. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, that is the knitting. I know. Weird. Um, so like I said, the other thing I've been doing is I've been sewing and, uh, one of the things that I've done, that I've completed is actually this dress, um, which is a McCall's pattern. Um, it's a vintage McCall's pattern. So it's one that they updated from a pattern from the fifties. Um, it is a full circle skirt. So it takes an inordinate amount of material and it has a petticoat under it, which also takes a lot of material. And um, hemming this is most likely what finally killed my um, 35 year old Kenmore uh, that my mother had given me, which I love that machine because it would go through anything, but it was slow. It was very, very slow. Um, but this dress, I've always wanted one because I love the style. And again, I'll insert pictures of the whole thing because if I stand up, the camera angle goes and it just, and I annoy the pug, never annoy the pug. Um, but one of the reasons why I wanted to do this dress so badly was this one. Now this is, as a lot of you can probably tell from the front, uh, is the 80s. This is actually my dress. It was something my mother made on me, made for me rather. Um, and it is again, a full circle skirt complete with like frilly lace. And I had a crinoline that went under this. And this was something she made for me when I was, I wanna say five or six. Um, I have a bunch of the dresses that my mom made me as a child. And this was one of my favorites. And I've loved this dress for years. And that was kind of when I found the speckled fabric, the, the polka dot fabric. It's like, okay, yeah, I have to remake it. And I found the pattern. Um, a friend of mine, Suna, found it for me, actually. Um, and it's like, okay, well, yeah, yeah, I have to buy it. Um, there is another version of this that's just the skirt, which I forgot to pull out. Um, that I had originally made out of flamingo fabric, but the fabric was too loose and didn't work for the top. So it's just a skirt, which is fine. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, this is the last thing that was fully made on the old machine. Hi, I'm sorry, I stopped. Um, so we got a new machine. And I have since made several other things. Um, what I finished today and what I'll kind of intersperse the random knit, uh, 
random bits with is this, which is not a seat cushion or an apron. It is actually a bum pad. Um, it is a somewhat historically accurate rendition of a 1903-04, early 1900s anyways, um, ladies bum pad, bustle pad. Um, and the reason I made that, and this was kind of, this was my first foray into putting grommets in things, because grommets. Um, the reason I made that is because I had finished, oops, let's just hook that together, this yesterday. Um, and I will, this is jean, so, and it is stretch denim. Hi, you're in the way. Whoop, there we go. Um, and it's pugged. I mean, so is everything else in my life. Um, it is a modern-esque version of a 1898 walking skirt. Um, that's the pattern uh, from a company called Truly Victorian. And I've made a couple of their patterns now, and I really like them because they do, they are historically accurate, but they've also graded them so that they fit modern, you know, you can fit a modern figure, uh, which is wonderful because I tried making my own patterns. Didn't work well. Um, maybe at some point we'll try that again, but I can create knitting patterns. I cannot create sewing patterns. Um, one of... This is a rant for later. One of the reasons why I decided to start making my own clothing is because of pockets. Women's clothing does not have pockets, or it pretends to have pockets, and you can fit, you know, your fingers up here into it, if that. And I mean, I carry a cell phone, I have a wallet, I have keys, I have keys for work. You know, there, there's stuff that you need to carry, and you don't always want to walk out of the door with a purse. So I wanted pockets, and I wanted skirts with pockets, um, which is what this is. Uh, it turns it's upright. That's upright. This attaches it to the waistband just so it hangs properly, um, and so it's supported. But yeah, that's a pocket. This dress has the exact same one in it. There is only one in the dress. It's on the right hand side because I realized that probably shouldn't put two pockets of this size in because I will use them. Uh, and then the dress will fall off and that's never a good thing. Um, but yeah, I can get my arm straight down almost to the elbow in this while wearing it. It's great. I mean, I can hide a full ball of sock yarn in this thing. Uh, which actually is a really good idea because it, you know, make it great for walking around with one. Um, thing I'm still a little working on is back closure because it's not, I went with the historically accurate-ish back closure, um, which means they just have a placket that folds over and then you attach it with hook and eye at the top or button or something. and. I'm not okay with that because it was going to split open a bit and I'm not always going to be wearing long tops. So I've got a series of um, snaps and I need to put one more on because I was wearing it around the house this morning and realized that there was a problem. But the bustle pad goes under this, which is what actually makes it poof just right in the back. Because um, my rear end has gotten a lot flatter as I have gotten older, uh, which is not a bad thing, but when trying to recreate a skirt from turn of the century London, it does cause problems. Um, so yeah, the little bustle pad actually gives it not that much flare out, uh, but does give it just enough flare out that it looks right. And that actually came from another of uh, the Truly Victorian patterns. This, I haven't decided if I'm going to do that corset or a different one from kind of the same era yet. Um, I've made one and it 
mostly works. Um, and I need to make another one, but that's on the table for later. I have a few other things that I want to make. Um, so let's see here. What else is there? So that's kind of the what I've been up to. And there'll be more. There's other pieces of clothing and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I will I will show other stuff as time goes on. Um, so on to kind of the hello and welcome back, the housekeeping type stuff. So I'm not going to at the moment post regularly. Um, I have to figure out my camera situation. So some of this stuff is filmed on my iPhone. Some of it is filmed on a uh, old DSLR. You know, none of them are good YouTube cameras. Um, although my cell phone is probably the better option. Um, I am planning, that's what this whole thing is, is this is going to be um, me kind of documenting my quest to make a uh, turn of the 20th century-esque wardrobe to wear on a daily basis. Uh, about two, almost three years ago, I started wearing skirts more often because quite frankly, I just find them more comfortable. Um, but it's hard to find skirts for someone my height um, that cover the knee. So I eventually decided this year, I'm just going to try my hand at making some, which meant I jumped in with both feet and the first thing I made in probably like actual garment wise in a lot of years um five six seven something like that um was corset because of course it was this is me we're talking about here um but i figure i want to make a handmade wardrobe and Part of that is going to be, instead of do, using stuff that I've made, um, using stuff that I've repurposed. So I have a couple of blouses now that were men's shirts that I've altered so that they fit me. These are things I picked up at um, the thrift store locally. But it's also making things like the skirts because that is what I find comfortable to wear. Um, and oddly enough, I find corsets really comfortable. Get one that fits properly. Um, more on that later. I'll do a whole show on corseting because I'm actually going to try and film making the new corset because I have all the stuff for it. Um, is that a moth? No, it's not a moth. Okay, it's Danny Long Legs. Uh, what else is going on? As you probably noticed at the beginning, I introduced myself as Liz, um, and that is because at the beginning of this year, um, anyone who follows me on social media probably noticed my post, um, I changed my name. And I have legally changed my name, so that is, that is it now. Um, I'm still finding places where it's the old one and whatnot, so, eh. So until next time, uh, feel free to you know, subscribe down at the bottom if you want to know when my next episode is out. Um, my uh, Ravelry is still up and running. Um, I have changed the name of the Ravelry group to For the Want of Pockets. So like I said, that is kind of a theme going on with everything. Um, I am still all over social media. I'm on Instagram. I'm not really on Twitter. Um, I'm mainly, let's, let's be realistic, I'm mainly on Instagram. Um, and I'm still on Ravelry as Jaded Knitter. Um, pretty much anywhere else that you can find me. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of ums and ahs in this. I'm gonna have to get used to talking to a camera again, I think. Yeah. 
So that's it. That's all. Now we're gonna go see about getting this sorted and hopefully this worked because I'm not entirely sure it did. Yeah. I really hope the audio is working on this. Until next time.